well. We know that uh, we know the weaknesses that define the history of alcoholism or drug abuse. I mean, they're, they're easily documentable in an individual. And, and of course, they've been described in general in populations of individuals with this history, we understand it. And we, we actually have programs in which we're, we're trying to, in a sense, correct the brain to drive it in the normal word direction and all of these things that we know to be weakened. I might say that there are sort of two levels of it. Of it. Uh, there are individuals that, in which the alcoholism and drug abuse has been chronic enough so that it, it's had a general impact on cognitive operation and on, on the capacity to learn and grow itself. All of it's correctable. All of it can be improved substantially driven in a reversing direction by intensive training. So one thing a person from this history should understand is that everything that's occurred in their brain, that nothing is, nothing is final, nothing is permanent. You can't kill the plasticity of the brain, no matter how much alcohol or how, 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 much, how many opiates or whatever you, you pour on it. it it it's, it's fundamentally plastic. So you can think of the, the, the path, path back to full recovery, to full neurological restoration might be a very long one. But there's nothing I know of that indicates that you cannot drive the brain back to full restoration. And uh, get busy is my strong recommendation.